lot of you here this morning. We have a lot of guests with us this morning, and we want you to feel at home. May the Lord bless you. A lot of them are kin to our first lady. It's always good to have her relatives here, her mom and dad, brother and sister Mobley. I just wish we could get to see them more often. And thank God for each and every one of you that put forth the effort to be here today on this Pastor's Appreciation Day. You know, the Bible says, honor to whom honor. And we should honor the man of God, our pastor, which is the shepherd. And also, let, while I'm thinking about it, let me uh, give you a little tidbit of information. Four months from today is Christmas. I love Christmas. Four months. And it'll be here before you know it. And I, because of Christmas, what we celebrate, the birth of Jesus, we're here today. If it hadn't been for Christmas, we wouldn't be here. If it hadn't been for Easter, we wouldn't be here. But because of Christmas and Easter, those two days and what happened, we're here today. And thank God for it. And thank God for salvation through faith in Jesus and his finished work on Calvary. God has been really good to us. And I thank him for allowing us to come together on this last Sunday of August 2024. Now, you know, next Sunday is the 1st of September. We start a new Sunday school year or church year. And if you're not going anywhere to Sunday school or life groups, we'd like to have you to come and be with us next Sunday at 10 a.m. We'd love very much to have you. Now, let me take your praise reports and or prayer requests. I want to start on my right. Anybody, signify by lifting of your hand, and I'll recognize you. Anybody. Okay, how about this section here? Anybody? Sister? Anybody else in that section before I move? How about this section here? Anybody? Sister Kaiser? Yes. Amen. Anybody else in that section? Pastor Charles? Any? Anybody else in that section before I move? All right, extreme left. Anybody? Up on the platform? Okay, just in case you thought of something, I'll give you a chance one more time. All right, would you stand, please? We serve a mighty God, and he loves us, and I thank God for that. Let's talk to him together. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, thanking you for this day. This Lord's Day, and this day we celebrate as Pastor's Appreciation Day. We thank you for every person that you've sent this way, for the traveling mercies that you have given us. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come together knowing that you're in our midst because you said wherever two or three are gathered together in your name that you'd be in the midst. And Lord God, we just thank you for that promise, knowing that you are not a man, that you will lie, that you're here. And we thank you for the life group service that we had this morning. And now we thank you for this service that we're going to have, Lord. We pray that you'll be here in a mighty way and bless every man, woman, boy, and girl in this facility. And Lord, those that are still coming, we pray that you give them traveling mercies. And may everything that's said and done here today be according to your will. And may the name of Jesus be lifted up in every heart. If there be any lost ones here today, we pray that you'll save them before this day is over, Lord God. And thank you for allowing us to come and worship you. And Lord, we thank you for our praise and worship team. We pray that you will anoint them with a special anointing. And oh God, bless, bless our pastor as he brings the word and anoint him with a great anointing and anoint us that we can receive all that you have for us from your word. May we feast on your word today. May we praise you together. May we lift up your name together, Lord God, and bless the people. Bless everyone. Meet every need from the youngest to the oldest. We 
pray that you'll bless him. We thank you for the blessings you've already blessed us with. We thank you for salvation so full and free, paid for by Jesus on Mount Calvary almost 2,000 years ago. And because of that, Lord God, we're here. And Lord, we invite you into our midst. We bless your name and thank you for what you have done, are doing, and are going to do here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Good morning. We are so glad that you're here with us at Ridgeville Church of God this morning. Who's glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. To, Proverbs 18, 21 says that we have power of life and death in our tongue. So we're going to speak some life this morning. I am the righteousness of God. I stand in covenant with him. And through this, I have new life, new anointing, and new power. I will not worry, nor have fear. Lord, your word and your spirit, they come for me. I'm increasing in your knowledge and in your wisdom. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Through your covenant, I am healthy. I am blessed. There's nothing missing and nothing broken. You've made me a blessing and everything I touch is blessed. Lord, I thank you that my family walks in obedience to your word and to your will. Take me, Lord. Take Ridgeville Church of God to the highest place in glory. Amen. Will you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Lord, we just give you praise. We honor you today. We give you praise and honor today, Lord. We glorify your mighty name. We thank you, God, that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords, God, and we give you praise. We welcome you and Holy Spirit into this place, God, and we just honor you. God, freedom and liberty in this house today, God. We just bless your holy name, God, and we give you thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's worship together today. There's God
I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the day. Amen. I am ready for the day to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. No more pain. No more sadness. Amen. No more taxes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just want one thing in heaven besides seeing Jesus and being with my loved ones. I hope there's some Dr. Peppers with you. Amen. It's so good to see all of you here today uh, for pastor appreciation. You look good. Amen. It's so good to see family. It's so good to see some former uh, members that we pastored who are, by all accounts, considered family. And it is so good to see our good friend Tanner. Uh, amen. Uh, some more like family. Again, uh, his dad was in our wedding. Uh, we consider Jason, that's his dad, and Stephanie, his mother, like family as well. So it is good to see Tanner and, and them uh, with us today as well. And it's good to see all of you, because without you, who would we pastor uh, besides my family? And they get tired of me sometimes. <laughs> Amen. Let me give you some announcements real quick while, before we take up our morning tithes and offering. Today is Pastor Appreciation, so uh, at the conclusion of the message, uh, we will go into the back for some fellowship and some food, so please don't jet out. We want you to eat, be merry, and have fun. But there won't be any PM service tonight due to that. We want you to be able to spend time with your family as I get to spend time with mine. Now, tomorrow, men, at 7 o'clock, there's the men's fellowship. We want you to come and be a part of that. Uh, because we want you to outnumber the women. I don't know why the women be laughing. The women had 23, and so that's, that's the goal we got to beat. Amen. So we, we honor the women. So men, we got to go beyond 23. So you got to go into the hedges and the highways and the byways and bid them all to come. Amen. And uh, so uh, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock is the Men's Fellowship. Uh, Holy City Ministry, uh, that's our uh, partnership that we get to do with uh, Brother Kenny. And we'll be feeding the homeless uh, downtown Charleston. So this Saturday at 10, we'll be here, begin prepping, feeding, uh, or prepping for the food. And then at 3.30, we'll go downtown Charleston. Uh, for prepping at five o'clock. Now, Brother Kenny, who heads up the Holy City Ministry, is looking for at least six to eight individuals to help in the distributing of the food. There'll be a service and feeding of the homeless, so we need help uh, feeding that. It just helps in the uh, passing out, and then we'll tear down and come back and be ready for service on Sunday, which is Labor Day Sunday. And as you know, traditionally here with a holiday following that, there's no PM service. And so we want you to uh, enjoy the holiday. It is also Warm Sunday. A Warm Sunday here is the Widows and Retired Ministers. And we are privileged to be able to sponsor uh, Widows and Retired Ministers. Matter of fact, we are blessed to have one of our Widows and Retired Minister recipients with us, Sister Rosa Gowd. Can y'all give her honor? Amen. And so every month we get to sponsor them. And on, in December, we give them a second check. And we've been doing this for a number of years. And so we're blessed to be able to do that. These are retired ministers who have blazed the trail before us. And there's a criteria that has to be met. Um, and won't go into the criteria, except that they couldn't pastor a mega church. They couldn't have a, a church that has really paid into a system these are ministers that really need help and we are honored to be able to help them and I could go into story after story of how our check has helped them make a bill paid for medicine and you and I can attest that God is an on time God and that check at the right time has popped in that mailbox and provided when they just didn't know where it was coming from, Ridgeville showed up. But not Ridgeville. We were the extension of the hand of God. And so thank you for being faithful. Amen. Real quick, also, we begin Revival Friday or fire service on September the 8th. It'll be in the PM service on the 8th, the 15th, and the 22nd. 
And so we're excited about that. And then we go into um, the October through uh, December. Uh, we'll uh, get into more of that. But here's something tentatively. I say tentatively because uh, you've asked for it and I'm going to give it to you. But I got to square one thing away. Many of you know back in April I lost my mother. And through that ordeal, I have gone through hoops and hoops on estate planning. Um, things that could have been done better to help minimize the things that my family's had to go through. And so I want to help you not have to go through some of the things that I've had to go through. And so right now, um, I'm looking for the date of September the 21st on here at the church on an estate plan. I want to teach you some things that your family can be better prepared for the loss of a loved one. And so you'll hear a little bit more about that next week. But uh, just keep that on your calendar. I'll tell you a little bit more about it coming up. But I want you to grab your tithes and offering. Father, today we thank you. What a beautiful crowd you have blessed your house with. And God, today we give you honor because the honor goes to you. And you have blessed us. Now we in return get to bless your house. But more importantly, Lord, we want to bless you in spirit, in worship. And we ask God that liberty would be in this place. And that as praise and worship goes up, the fertilization of the ground is made. So that the word of God is laid. And the seed is easily embedded into our hearts and in our minds. That in days and weeks to come, that the seed can be watered and sprout forth and that we can become vessels for the kingdom of God and so in this we give you us and we give you offering we give you tithes but we also give you our worship for this truly is a house of praise blessed in all that we do as we honor you for you are worthy of it all in Jesus' holy name we pray, amen and amen. Would you come and bless the house of God this morning? Yeah. 
just in your own way, just begin to worship him. He's worthy of it all. Oh, yes, he's so worthy. For from you are all things. Yes, he is. And to you are all things. He's worthy. You deserve the glory. Oh, he deserves it. He deserves it. worship be a sweet aroma unto you may everything that we have be pleasing in your sight you deserve the glory not us but you and we're here today God for no other reason but to exalt you this is your day this is your house and we're your people God, I just ask you right now, Lord, as you have once again come and moved in such a miraculous way, God, let the wave of your glory move. Just move in this place. God, we know it's a special day, but Lord, I would surrender it just for the Shekinah glory to come down and saturate this place. For us to have an encounter with the Almighty God. This is what it's all about. It's all about you. God, we've come today to exalt you. Help us, O oh God, most holy one. do my best and while the spirit is still in its moving state I want you to just turn with me in the book I don't know how long I'm going to preach I, I got a message but I want to be obedient as well And I say I got a message because what's happening right now is exactly what I'm about to preach. This stuff cannot be manufactured. It cannot be concocted. It, it can't even be scripted any other way but God confirming. In Leviticus chapter 6, Verse 8 through 13, the Bible says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. The burnt offering shall be upon the, earth, upon the altar all night until morning. And the fire of the altar shall be kept burning on it. The priest shall put his linen garment and the linen trousers shall be put on his body and take up the ashes of the burnt offering which the fire has consumed on the altar and shall be put them beside the altar. Then shall he take off his garments and put on the garments, the other garments, and shall carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. And the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning. 
lay the burnt offering in the order on it and he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offering a fire shall always be burning on the altar it shall never go out it shall never go out today I want to preach about a dying flame a dying flame you could be seated For some in the house today, this message is going to sound familiar because I preached it at my in-laws pastor appreciation day. And while I was preparing for it and I was discussing it with my family and telling them a little bits and pieces about it, uh, Isaac said, Daddy, you going to preach that at your pastor appreciation? And I said, yes, sir, I am. Because it's a message that if I had an opportunity, I would go into every church and preach it. Because I feel so, so passionate about the warning cry needs to go out that if we're not careful, there's a flame that's dying in churches. See, last month, we preach a series about freedom and, and there's not a freedom in the house of God like it used to be to worship. To move and allow God to move like he needs to move and churches have become so dignified. You got to have me out by 12, preacher. Well, it's 1135. I got 25 minutes. I'll do my best. If not, Please, somebody go fix somebody a plate and you can eat in the buffet in the fellowship hall. But listen, we have put God in a box for too long. We have regulated God and then we wonder why the world is in such turmoil and why the world is in such issues. And it's not because the world, it's because of us. But listen, let me help somebody because the problem today isn't the church, it's the people in the church. We don't pray like we used to. We don't seek God like we used to. We don't come humbly to God like we used to. God's the last person we consult and the world's the first people we consult. Google is who we go to first, not God. Siri, Alexis. I don't know why they're women names. I'm just kidding. Let me stop. I'm about to get myself in trouble. Amen. Somebody help me get out of trouble right here. But listen, the last thing we need to is to try to get to this place. And the last thing I'm here to do is to try to tell you how to treat a pastor better. Because your pastor has not told me that y'all are doing a bad job. Some of y'all get it in a minute, all right? Y'all a little slow this morning, but y'all get it in a minute. But if you'll give me some liberty, I want to I educate you for a minute. 1,500 pastors leave the ministry every month due to burnout, conflict, a moral failure. 57% of the ministers report that they would leave the ministry if they thought they could do something else. 45% of ministers say they struggle with burnout or depression. 41% of pastors considered quitting the ministry in the last 12 months. 51% of mainline ministers. Among the reasons given, 56 said it was the stress of the job. 43% said it was loneliness or isolation. 38% said it was a political division within the church. 29% said it was that they were not optimistic about the future of their church. 24% said that they would, were quitting because the church was in steady decline. 21% said they don't feel respected by their congregation. Another 21% said that they, it was just something else. 6% said the ministry is not what they thought it would be. 70% of pastors said that they do not consider to have somebody close as a friend. 
66% of church members expect a minister and their family to live a higher standard than they do. 84% of pastors desire to have a close friend, but they can't find it in their church. Over 50% of pastors are unhealthy, overweight, and can't exercise. The profession of pastor is near the bottom of a survey of the most respected of professions just above car salesmen. One of every 10 pastors will retire as a minister. And you ask why I'm going to preach about a dying flame. It's not for you to feel guilty about a pastor today. One, you've heard Brother Smoke often say, pray for your pastor. Absolutely pray. But before you pray for your pastor, pray for yourself. Because we're in this together. And a pastor needs to have sheep to tend to. But what I want to help you and I understand that a dying flame is nothing more than an ember. And an ember is a smoldering piece of wood or coal, usually a small burning. It still has life, but it's not burning as brightly or as strong or as powerful as it once was. There used to be power to it, but for some reason it's lost its connection to the fire. It used to have the source. It used to have the, the energy. It used to have the, the burning connection. It used to have all the components. But it's not there now. Smokey the Bear, you've heard him? In 1944, Smokey the Bear had a slogan, care will prevent nine out of ten forest fires. Can I say today, care will prevent nine out of ten fires from going out. Just care for somebody. But listen, in 1947, Smokey the Bear's slogan took a shift and, and it said, remember, only you can prevent forest fires. In 2020 or, 21 or 2001, it shifted and it became this, only you can prevent wildfires. Why? Because there was a, a phenomenon that took place that wildfires became a, a, a nuisance in this country. Natural wildfires began to burn uncontrollably and there was no way of putting it out. But can I tell you, we need some wildfires today. And what I find in the church is we got a lot of people willing to put out some fires because we don't want the contamination of the fires. We don't want the fire to burn at my house. I don't want it to destroy my house. I don't want it to burn the sins in my life because I'm enjoying it. And so it's not that the flames or the, the, the flame is dying. It's that we don't want to resurrect it. We have purposely put it out. Now, I'm not really a big camper. I love camping, but, you know, don't get to go very much, Sister Wilma. But Smokey the Bear tells you, make sure you put the fire out. Stay until it's all put out. And if you got to put some dirt on it, if you got to put some water on it, you do what you got to do to tend and care for that fire because it's your responsibility. Can I tell you today, the fire, uh, yes, some of it's my responsibility is your shepherd. But by and large, you're the shepherd of your home. Dad, father, husband, and if there ain't one in the house, mama, mother, and if there ain't one of those in the house, teenager. I was trying to think of a name. Yeah, Adult. <laughs> Whatever. And if all of them are lost, kid, son, daughter, it only takes a spark. There's a song growing up, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And all we need is a spark in the church. All we need is look a little flint and, and listen, just keep going. It's some of Nemo, just keep going, just keep going. But let's just keep striking, just keep striking. 
We know that iron sharpeneth iron, but what about a rock against a rock? And sometimes a spark gets on the right dry place and all of a sudden the spark begins to burn something and we got some fire and when you begin to see a little bit of smoke, all of a sudden we get to blow and when we begin to blow, we think it's our breath, but inside of us is the breath of God and really it's not just the breath of God, it is the Holy Ghost fire beginning to burn and all of a sudden we got some Holy Ghost fire beginning. And so now all of a sudden it's not a dead drying flame. It is the fire of God in us again. And we need that in us again. See, just as one can prevent a fire from dying, one can get it going. Let me help. Fire, uh, fireplace.com said how to start a fire. Well, you, you know, we think we know everything. So let me just help you because for those who don't know everything, always keep a flame on your fire. That's common sense, right? A smoldering fire is a signifying that it's cold and insufficient. Add more wood before it gets too low. Duh. But some people just don't know. Who's going to chop my wood? You are. Now listen. Sister Gwen, when I was growing up, I know I ain't, I'm about to turn 48 years old. I look good for 48. I know that. But when I was growing up, we had to go outside. There was this thing. It was a handle. It was made out of wood. And on the end... It had a sharp piece on it. You actually had to swing it and chop the wood, bring it in, put it in the, and it produced the heat. Now we just, Alexis, turn up the heat. <laughs> it's electric flames. It's electric. Oh, oh sorry. Help me, Holy Ghost. But listen. <laughs> you got to add more wood if you want the fire burning. But it's got to be the right kind of wood. Wet wood don't burn. And some people don't care what kind of wood it is. Oh, that pine tree? Yeah, throw it on there. You got to have the good wood. You got to have the, the, the good dry wood. But it, it's got to be the hard wood. Because it lasts longer. But listen, the problem for most churches that I've found in 24 years of ministry is this. That they're not sincere in their worship. They're not sincere in their worship. Well, preacher, whatever, 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 whatever. But listen, the priest is responsible. Let, let me help somebody real quick because I need to move on. There, there's this thing I want, the law of burnt offering. We are responsible. We're the priest. Every one of us are a priest of our own. You're responsible for your own fire. Now, we together are responsible for the fire in the church. So quit judging the other church. You attend this church. So don't worry about, well, that church down there, they dead. You quit gossiping and you're going to be dead too. You're responsible for the fire in your church. Let, let me move on before somebody writes me a letter. But to keep the fire burning, you got to be intentional. You don't wake up one morning and be like, I wonder how that got started. If you don't put wood on it, it's going to die out. And it's a lot more work to get it rekindled than if you'd have just thrown a piece of log on it before you went to bed. So listen, there, there's this thing, I, I'm going to jump real quick. There's this thing called the law of 
burnt offering or the doctrine of priesthood, really. But in here, four things or five things real quick, and I'm going to try to wrap this up. Privilege status. Privilege status. I ain't talking about what the world talks about. That's just junk. That's enemy junk. Privilege status. Christians are a royal priesthood. Because they are heirs to the kingdom of God. As a son or daughter of Jesus Christ, you are of privileged status. You can look at the enemy and tell the enemy, I am a child of the Most High. Get thee behind me, Satan. There is, there is fire that you don't have. You got rid of it when you wanted to be equal with God. You can't have what I have. I am of privileged status. You are less than me. And so listen, when you begin to look at that, you understand I am closer to God than the enemy is. Number two, you have to live holy to be holy. You got to live holy to be holy. I ain't talking about legalistic. I ain't talking about all that. I'm talking about living holy. Be ye holy as I am holy, as God said. You, you can be holy and worship him. Listen, I can be holy and, and, and do the right things. But listen, you have to live free so that God can work in you. Quit judging people. You are a sinner, but saved by grace. If God wanted to, he could put your sin on the billboard. But he loved you enough to say, I'm going to save you. I'm not going to remember your sins any other way, so I'm not going to bring it up. The only one that's going to bring it up is Satan himself. So just quit in the church, quit judging people and love them. And we got to get to this place that God said, be ye holy as I am holy. He is a holy God. He doesn't bring it up. He doesn't charge you against it anymore because his blood washes away all sins. He says, I will cast it as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. We got to quit remembering people's sin and begin to free them from it. Why? Because when the fire is hot, we're about moving forward, not backwards. Fellowship with God. Christians are expected to draw near to God, walk with him, eat with him. I want to walk and talk with Jesus each and every day. Some of us don't. Why did Christ come and say, Adam, Eve, where are you? He knew where they were at. He wanted to know if they would answer. And when Jesus asks you a question, don't you already know he knows the answer? So why are we playing dumb with God? I know y'all don't have kids like this. But if I ask my daughter or my son a question, and they're like, I don't know. She's looking at me like, you know. And I know that you know that you know that I know. So just say it. Honesty is the best policy, right? So why are we going to tell God, I don't know? Who told you you were naked? Because just a little bit before it said they were naked and unafraid. They were naked and unashamed. They, they didn't know they were naked. What am I saying? I'm simply saying, listen, when we walk and talk with God, it's not a matter what anybody else thinks. Because when the fire burns inside of us, it don't matter what Brother Chad says. Because when the fire burns in him and the fire burns in me, we ain't worried about what anybody else thinks. Because we're going to live it right, we're going to do right, and we're just going to keep marching forward because at the end of the day, it's what he says. And if we'll do what he says, guess what? We're going to be in heaven and we're just going to be, hey, hey, how you doing? Oh, you didn't make it? I wonder why. You quit your judging. And the problem is this, and I'm going to quit. I got 
947 more words to say, but I'm not going to say them. A fire can't go out. Let me go to the last page then. Paul addresses Timothy. And Timothy let his fire go out. He let his fire go out. And the reason I preach the way I do at times is because my job is to remind you not to let your fire go out. It's not that I don't like you. It's not that I got a problem with you. It's that I got a calling on me that I can't. I, I can't back away. My job is to preach the gospel. And to stand before a holy God with clean hands and say, God, I did it. And there are times that I preach a message and I'm like, God, I don't want to. But I got to. And so come before I go beyond what I got. Paul tells Timothy, stir up the gift of God. Stir up the gift of God, which is in you by putting on my hand. It is time to go back to work, church. It is time to quit watching the flames of others and saying, I wish I had that. I remember I had that. I know we used to sing the songs, I remember the day when the Lord saved me. Oh, heaven came down. I was happy and free. And it's great to remember. But when's the last time he touched you? He touched me. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. But when's the last time he touched you? Was it five years ago? When's the last time you felt the warmth for the flame? When's the last time you, you seen even the flicker of the flame? Are you just an ember? Do you see some smoke? Today, my job is just to come and be the flame. If I got to be the flame, be the fan, if I got to, whatever it is. But we got to be a church that's on fire for God. The world needs to see it. We are a lighthouse on a lost and dying world. And we have a responsibility. So I want you to stand. Because it's up to us to keep the fire going. Every head bowed and every eye closed. No one looking around. Maybe today you would say, Pastor, my flame's gone out. And I need God to touch me and save me so that I can burn again. If that's you, I just want you to look this way and put your head right back down. Yes, I see you. I see you. I see you. Maybe today you would say, Pastor, I, I need to be rekindled. I need to be rekindled. I'm smoldering. I'm an ember. I once was on fire. I'm still there. I know I still got it. It's just not burning as brightly or as hot as it once was. And I want to burn again for God. Would you pray for me? If that's you, just look this way. Put your head right back down. Yes. Yes. Father, all of us in seasons of our life become embers. Circumstances. can be sand or water begin to strip away the components that keep the flame going individuals in our life sometimes can be the poker and 
enough poking can remove the source that keeps our fire burning. But God, this is why church is so important. We need one another to lean on, to be the encouragers. And so God, I pray today for these that look this way that said, hey, pastor, I need to be saved. Romans 10 verse 9 says, if we'll confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that he died, rose again, we can be saved. And so today, for those who are here that says, I need to be saved, all we have to do is confess. So today, I confess my sins and ask you, God, to save me, cleanse me, make me whole. I dedicate my life to you, burning me so that I can burn for you. And Lord, we know if they prayed that prayer or even something similar, Lord, that their name is written in the Lamb's book of life and heaven is rejoicing. And we too are rejoicing. There were those who looked this way that said, I'm just an ember. But I want to be more. I need to be more. So, Father, I pray that you would use this message and use us to be the fan. To fan that ember so it can burn brighter and hotter than this last day than ever before. That together as a church, as a kingdom of God, as believers of like minds, that we'll be the source that one another needs to burn and that you will be the breath that resurrects the fire in each and every one of us. Would you touch us today? Would you move and minister in such a powerful way in our lives and help us? And Lord, today we're going to give you the honor and the glory for all things that are accomplished because your name is holy and you are wonderful and righteous. We thank you. Bless each and every one today. In your name we pray. Amen Amen. and amen. Church, would you give a round of applause for these who accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, we celebrate them. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. If I could have... Sister Betsy, Isaac, and Izzy, Pastor. We're so thankful for everybody who came to join us today to celebrate our pastor and his family and realize that it takes this whole group, each one supporting each other, to minister and to do their job but he could not do it by himself without his teammates here and we're so thankful for them we celebrate all four of them not just three not just one but we just are so appreciative of them and the ministry that God has placed them in and we celebrate God for who God is in them because you see in everything that they do you can see God in each one of them we watch Izzy as she's growing and see how God is using her I mean she just the love she has for God and the talent that he's placed upon her life same with Isaac and the music in his hands back there working for the Lord already at their young ages and we're so blessed you know I cannot say enough about this family and the love I have for them and the tolerance that they have for me but um, you know we, we are blessed Um, Each year we try and come up with something new as a church to give as a thing. And this year I Googled some things and we have a spot out there on the table where we don't have nothing to go to. So I come up with a cross and thing to put up on the table from the church for you. And um, just... And I have to say, my husband did that, so he's working for the Lord, whether he realizes it or not. So, you know, I praise God for that, and I'm thankful.
for the things we've yet to see. You know, but um, Pastor, on behalf of the church, we thank you for the ministry and the time that you put in and the selfless hours. You know, we're so thankful. Um, Miss Izzy, you're such a jewel to us, and you don't know how much you and Isaac make my day when y'all come into the office on Sunday mornings or Wednesdays and give me that hug. You know, it just is amazing. I love sharing your grandchildren. You know, it's a blessing, you know. Isaac. And Sister Gal, would you like to say something, honey? It's such a privilege to be here. When I got my invitation in the mail, my heart just jumped out of me almost because I said, you know, that's one way I can go and tell the church how much we appreciate what you've done for us over the years. And brother, my husband passed away in May of uh, 23. Brother Houston came to the service or came to the visitation, well, the service. And it just blessed my heart again. And you know, um, you'll never know, you'll never know what, and I love that message you preached this morning. You know, we have to reach out. People are just not going to come just so. You have to reach out and you have to have to. I told my daughter, I said, I'd love to have that message, or I told, said it. She didn't, I don't know whether she heard it or not. But Brother Houston, I appreciate you and your family. Somebody has to carry on. I was trying to, I called him the other day to find out where it began when this they started sending the retired minister and wife, widow or whatever, but he couldn't. He, he, he couldn't remember the year and I couldn't remember the year so I even brought my little brought my little thank you first thank you card that I wrote to the church and uh, uh, and he made the he made the mention a while ago I think he did uh, that the Lord knows goes before you and he knows the need and we were staying on the campground at the time, and I told my little granddaughter, I don't know, remember which one, where she was at my house, and I said, come on, honey, let's go to the mail and see what the Lord sent us. And there was the first check that Ridgefield sent to us. And you know, God goes before us. He knows what you need before you do. And he's just waiting for you to make the first step to say, Lord, I need this and I need that. Go before me, Lord. And he does. He does. And I'm so glad that I've been acquainted with these people for so many, many years. And you don't, if you've not lost a companion, you don't understand the things that we that have lost a companion uh, go through. But I love you guys. I love you guys. And I love this church. And you don't know how, how I buy a card to send to Ridgefield and I forget. You know, I'm not, I'm not young like that little girl right there anymore. I told somebody I'd been married all my life because I got married when I was 17. We were married 67 years, and God gave me a, a good husband. He went into the ministry, and he never got tired of the ministry. He didn't retire because of his, he was tired. He might have been tired, but he couldn't see good. He had health problems, and, but he loved the Lord, and he loved you guys, and he loved Ridgeville. Just pray for me and my children that we'll make it through these hard days. That, and it's still hard. It's still hard. But we love you.
Pastor Charles, First Lady Betsy, Isaac, and Izzy, we're so glad that you're here. I think back, you know, when they first came, it was on a trial basis. I'm glad they stayed. Over eight and a half years have gone by, and they're still here. And if the Lord tarries, I hope a whole lot more than eight and a half more years you'll be here. And may the Lord bless you. And I want you to know you're all of you in my prayers every day. And I love and appreciate you very much. And thank you for being our shepherd and first lady. And thank you, Isaac, for handling that sound system. And Izzy for being Izzy. And we love Izzy, too. <laughs> and in behalf of the life group, I take, take it. It's an honor and a privilege for me as the life group leader to present this to the pastor and his family. Let you know that we love you. And may the Lord bless you. You'll always, as long as I'm on this earth, I'm going to be praying for you all, whether you're here or God send you somewhere else. I love and appreciate you, brother. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, church. Sorry. Uh, Sister Bessie, on behalf of the women's ministry, we want to tell you how much we appreciate you, how much we are grateful for all that you do for us individually, collectively, how you pour into us, and how you show us how real you are, and how much time you spend, how you share Pastor with us, and Izzy and Isaac with us. We appreciate all that you do. We want you to know that we love you from the bottom of our hearts. God bless you. Happy of you. I'm horrible with words. Uh, <clears throat> Chad rhymes with Brad, so hush. <sighs> December babies, man. Uh, you're really good with acronyms and making words into whole sermons. I tried to, I'm horrible with it. I still remember in third grade trying to make an acronym for mother, and I, I couldn't rememberize it then either. Uh, but then I started thinking, what would I use? Reverend? Reverend would be a good word to make an acronym from. And for those that don't know, that's making another word of each letter of that word. Doctor? You have really achieved a great feat pastor you are my pastor and this letter this card from the men's fellowship I've put pastor Charles on there because you are my pastor but then it goes so much further could I use your name Charles could I use your last name Houston could I have looked at it from a family standpoint dad husband could I look at it even further son friend all of those things all of those names suit you and I'm happy that I'm able to call you my pastor I'm happy that I know that if I call you in the middle of the night you'll come and you'll help I'm grateful to know that the concern of, of the church does weigh heavily upon your shoulders but you allow a group of us to be able to come in alongside to be able to hold your arms so that you're able to minister so that the battle can still go on I want you to know I pray for you every morning and I make sure that I think about you and pray about you and I may not tell you but I pray for your family as well because the hedge of protection that I pray for you extends to them because they are an extension of you and when Izzy and, and 
Isaac grow up and they come out from underneath your wing, there'll still be you and Sister Betsy. So my concern is not just for today, but tomorrow for you, for your ministry, for your family. And that I know I'm a part of that family, even though my name's Smoke. I love you, Pastor. children and juniors church Miss Kathy sorry she could not be here today after complications Thursday with surgery but she does want to let you know that it's an honor and a blessing to be able to be part of Ridgeville Beef to be able to instill values to have values instilled in us You know, I've never been called a man of many words. Y'all better stand away from me after that statement. Sandy and I, we're new to the church. Y'all welcome us with open arms, and we appreciate that, all of you guys. So you guys are at the top. You're talking about the embers being burning. Well, on behalf of the uh, beautification team, I got enough stuff around here. We can keep that fire going for a long time. So if you ever need any of it, We've always got your back, Pastor and First Lady, but on behalf of the beautification team, we appreciate and love you. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, this morning when I got here, uh, I went into the pastor's office and he was busy and uh, I dropped off a little gift, but you know, I thank God for a pastor that will preach the word and preach it the way God meant it to be preached. But not only that, he has a wife that she is the music minister and she's a mom and she works a full-time job. And so it's kind of like a hen house. You have to have the rooster. Hey, I'm different. But I see things in different perspectives. <laughs> but as the mom, she keeps her little bitties and everything around her. And when she finds a nugget, she feeds it to them. And that's kind of what Sister Betsy does with you ladies. When y'all have your, your, your minister and, and everything on Tuesday nights or whatever. And then Brother Charles with the men, he tries to keep us in line. And as families... He's always there with Sister Betsy when y'all need them the most, you know. So I want to say that I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Pastor Charles, Sister Betsy from Praise Team, I love you, young lady. <laughs> This is from the nursery. Give her, give it to Miss Betsy. Say we appreciate that one, Mr. Pastor. We appreciate everything that you do for us. And these are the handprints of the kids that are praying for you from the nursery. And we love you. And we thought maybe you could use those things.
my voice is loud enough. Um, <laughs> but um, I want to tell y'all that I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. I tried to skate this church years back. I really did. But God told me I need to be back <laughs> and I need to come in. And I've never seen such a love or welcome when you come in the door. And I know y'all were first. I know y'all were first. Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and I know this journey can be tedious uh, because you got different personalities and different attitudes and everything. Um, but just know that I'm always going to stand in the gap for you. Not just the church, but the church too, but for the headship that was in the head fall for the body fall. And we can't allow the body to fall by the enemy at times because we are in a spiritual warfare. And I I, I, I voted for them to do this, and exactly. So, Pastor Miss Betsy, I want to say thank you. I've been in this church for three years, and places that I came from never gave me an opportunity to participate, to be a part of something. And this year, you gave me an opportunity that I don't think I would have ever gotten anywhere else, and that was to be the youth leader in this church. Um, and I know it came about a different way than probably I thought that it would be, but um, you overlook my faults. You overlook my, my craziness sometimes, my extraness, as I call it. Um, I say I'm extra because some folks are basic, but I'm a little extra sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but you look past all of that. You look past the trauma. You look past the hurt. You look past a lot of things, and... Through all of that, you still gave me an opportunity. And I don't, I don't take that lightly. Um, I take it to heart. And everything that I do, I give you my word that even a beautification team, praise and worship team, I will give it everything I have. Thank you for just entrusting me with the youth. I'm excited about it. Um, Isaac's part of our youth, and, man, I'm, I'm proud of you. More than you can ever imagine, I'm proud of you, buddy. You're faithful. You're faithful to do what you do. You don't want to give up your spot. I get it. I get that more than you realize. But I'm proud of you. Miss Betsy, I love you with all my heart. You've stuck with me through a lot. Probably more than most people in this church will ever know. But I consider you my best friend, and I thank you, and I love you. Izzy, you're really my best friend, and everybody knows that. I love you, little girl, and continue to always have the heart that you have for people. You welcome people, you love people, and I appreciate you so much as my little best friend. Pastor, thank you. Do you ever go to say nothing? Not yet. Okay. I, I do talk a lot, as you know, a lot of y'all know, but I usually don't get up here and talk a lot. So mine's going to be short and sweet and to the point. I thank y'all for always encouraging me. Thank you for allowing me 
to teach Izzy. That's my girl. Um, she keeps me on my toes. Y'all, Izzy, Izzy sets me straight. Izzy, if anybody else in this church keeps me straight, it's Izzy. Izzy keeps me straight. She got mad at me for a little bit, but I think she's okay with me now. So, but I think she's okay. Look at but I thank y'all for always being there for us, um, not just the church, but for my family too. And we greatly appreciate y'all. So, Izzy, this is from the youth and the Wednesday night class. so bad at talking in front of people. It makes me nervous. So, um, I'm sorry if I don't make eye contact with you the whole time. But when I was younger, I was really hurt by a church and I dreaded coming to church. I fought my mom tooth and nail to go. And y'all have just made me realize that church isn't something I need to dread. I've even found a friend in Isaac, in Izzy. I don't know how they keep up with you, because I can't. <laughs> I just appreciate and love y'all. Good afternoon. Uh, those of you who don't know me, I'm Sister Patricia's granddaughter. Um, oh, I'm trying not to get worked up. <laughs> I don't really be up here a lot, so I'm fairly new to the church. I come most Wednesdays, most Sundays, whenever my Nana drags me out the house. <laughs> um, I don't have a loud voice like my Nana, so I'll try to get this out quick as possible before the tears well up. Um, I love you guys. Um, <laughs> I've never felt so welcome in a church before. I've been in many, 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 many churches. The one back home um, with my grandparents, they welcome me, their family, so, you know. But for y'all to love a stranger like myself, it's like, it's amazing. And I see the where God put, the, the God, words aren't even coming out. But the way God shows his love through y'all is amazing. Sing. And I'm so, so grateful for y'all. I don't have a gift. Um, <laughs> I've been working, but that's coming soon. Don't worry. <laughs> but I, on behalf of me and my family, my sisters that aren't here, my, fa my mom, my stepfather, those who aren't here, I want to say thank y'all. Because I really, really do appreciate y'all and the way y'all love me. So thank you. Pastor, First Lady Izzy and Isaac, I just want to tell you guys thank you very much for making me more than just a number. Thank you for being my family since I'm away from my family. Thank you for accepting me and loving me, supporting me, praying for me, and for all that you all do and the impact that you have made in my life. I just want you to know that I appreciate you all for everything that you do. I know it's not easy, because I know I'm not easy, but <laughs> I love you and I appreciate you. All right, that was a lot. Thank you, guys. Um, thank you so much. As you know already, we couldn't be pastors if we didn't have people to pastor. 
And you guys are so great. We just love you, and we appreciate everything that you do for us, but also alongside of us, because we can't do it alone. We have to have you guys to help. And so we just appreciate everything that you do. You get behind us and help us and do the things. And so we just appreciate everything you you are to us and do for us. I love you, ladies. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> If you girls are not a part of our women's fellowship, you're missing out. Um, our girls, we love each other. We are friends. We don't just come in fellowship. We, we love one another. And as many of you already know, what happens at Ladies Fellowship? <laughs> it stays there. And that's what creates our um, sisterhood is that we, we come together and we, if we tell our story, we don't share it. It's not, if you tell your story, it's not my story to share. It's yours, and so we have to keep it that way. But anyway, I love you ladies. Thank you for always supporting women's ministries. I know that when I came here, they told me that the women really didn't support anything and that they didn't really come together, and I was kind of brokenhearted. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? And so here today, what, this past week, we had 23. And so I just say, praise the Lord, it's you girls that help out. You're the ones that get it done. You're the ones that show up. And thank you so much, ladies. Love y'all. Yes, amen. Thank y'all so much. I uh, don't really have words to say, but since you're here, hold on. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I was just kidding. It's uh, last week's message. Uh, it is uh, overjoyed uh, for the love that you've showed to us, and we uh, don't count ourselves worthy to receive such. When we started this journey, we just wanted to help people. We have sat in your seats just wanting to be loved just wanting somebody to feed us, somebody to show us some type of direction, give us some type of way. And so when God called us, what we didn't get from some pastors and what we did get from some pastors, we wanted to give. We're still in the learning phase. And by God's grace, we're going to stay in that phase. We have not arrived. And we're going to keep chugging we're going to keep growing. We're going to keep doing what God's called us to do until the time comes he calls us home because there's a harvest out there that needs to know the love of God. But we've got to do it together. And so we thank you for coming. Thank the family for coming. It was a surprise to see Kat and Nana Catherine. And it was a surprise, not really, to see George and them coming. Um, we love them. We love Tanner and the family there. We want you to stay and eat. Please don't run off. Oh, you have to stay. First lady says you got to stay and eat. Um, but please don't forget, no service tonight. Tomorrow, men, uh, bring a friend. Uh, Um, bring, bring somebody uh, and let's grow the men's and so that the ladies can hush their mouths and uh, <laughs> amen let me pray God we love you today thank you for the love of this house Lord we are one family and at times we want our family to go on vacation but Lord we're glad when they come back because we miss them you have brought us together because we need one another and as we love on one another and we help one another there are burdens we cannot carry by ourselves. we laugh together we cry together God, we need each other. And we're grateful. It's not by accident, Lord, that we're all here together in this roof. And so we ask, Lord, that you bless. 
And we ask that you bless each one, Lord, who had a hand in today's service, whether the gift they prepared, whether they drove to be with us, Lord, their heart that wanted to be here, or the hands that have prepared a meal that we're about to partake. We ask that you bless them. Multiply it, Lord, abundantly because of the love that they extended. Lord, we pray that the best days of this house are yet to come because the harvest is plenty and the workers, the workers have a heart. Lord, don't let the flame die out so that it will ignite more workers for the kingdom. Lord, we love you today and we honor you in your most holy name we pray and bless the food that we're about to partake of in your holy name. Amen and amen. Let one of them, somebody, tell them you're glad to see them in the house of God.